We've been speaking with the candidates vying for the top job in the Conservative Party. So joining us today is Ontario MP Michael Chong. Michael, great to have you in studio this morning. Great to be here. Let's talk about you. For people that don't know you, I mean, one of the things that you talk about is uh, your history, your parents uh, being immigrants to this country. What do you want people to know about you? Well, I'm, uh, I'm the kid of immigrant parents. Uh, it's a Canadian, it's a Canadian, part of the Canadian dream. You know, my parents were uh, immigrants to this country. My father was a Chinese immigrant. He came here from Hong Kong in 1952. My mother was a Dutch immigrant and she came here from the Netherlands in the 1960s. And I literally wouldn't be in front of you here today if it weren't for this country because Canadian soldiers both defended and liberated my father and my mother's family during the Second World War. So my family's always uh, felt a great debt of gratitude uh, to those generations of Canadians who came before us. I have to ask you about Stephen Blaney, Blaney's comments about you being integrated. Uh, how do you respond to that? Well, I understood what he was trying to say. Um, what so do you I think he was trying to say? Well, I didn't take any offense to it. I think what he was trying to say was that immigrants to Canada should integrate into Canadian society. I think um, my parents are a good example of that. Uh, my family is a good example of that. Um, but where he and I differ is I've got a very different vision uh, for the Conservative Party. I think we've got to build a modern, inclusive party that inclu includes Canadians from all races, religions, and creeds, and that's why I'm in this leadership race. Yeah, let's talk about your vision. Okay, so you want to steer away, you've said, from um, identity politics, talking about identity issues you want to steer more towards, uh, talking about our economy. So what would you say to Canadians watching right now? Mm -hmm. What is your platform? Well, quite simply, uh, we need to do better on creating economic uh, growth and jobs in this country. Economic growth has flatlined in Canada for the last uh, year, year and a half and the future prognosis is not looking great. So we really need to focus on how to get this economy moving. So that's why last week I introduced a pretty sweeping dramatic plan to significantly reduce income taxes mm -hmm. and to pay for it through a federal revenue neutral federal carbon tax, which is based on the British Columbia model. I think British Columbia has shown tremendous leadership and we at the federal level should take a look at that. A lot of people looking at the housing crisis, so to speak. Uh, you've also been talking about that. What's your solution? Well, quite simply, housing's become unaffordable for middle-class families in many of Canada's cities. And I think we need to look at macroeconomic policies uh, that are driving that unaffordability. And in my view, one of the biggest uh, problems that we have is the federal government's intervention in the housing market. Uh, the federal government intervenes through uh, a crown corporation called CMHC. There's a government-backed mortgage insurance and securitization program, and there's good evidence to believe that that is what's driving uh, up house prices. Okay, so I'm going to give you a scenario, though. Like, we're, yeah. we're, and we're talking Vancouver, Toronto, um, and somebody comes up to you, somebody watching right now, uh, and says, I can't afford a house. Like, give me some tangible um, solution to my problem right now where I can't get in the market. So what would you say to them? Well, I would say to them, for the last uh, six years since the Great Recession ended, the federal government has been tinkering around the edges of mortgage of the mortgage financing market, and that's not working. Um, affordability levels continue to uh, be out of reach of Canadians. House prices continue to skyrocket, and we're not uh, getting a grip on this problem. So what I would say to them is, you want your federal government to get out of the business of uh, privatizing profit and socializing risk, which is what we've done. The banks have no risk when it comes to the $520 billion in mortgages out there. So what we want to do is get the government out of that business return the federal government to its proper uh, role as a regulator of the banking system so that we can moderate mortgage credit growth and return uh, housing prices to more affordable levels over the long term. So that's what I would say to them. This is the plan to do it. Okay, debate happening Wednesday. That's right. Looking forward to that. The 12 people, including yourself. How are you going to stand out? What's your tactic? What's your move? Well, my view, it's not really a debate when you have, you know, 50 candidates on stage. Um, I think you know, exaggerating, there's about 12 people on stage, but I think it's <laughs> It may a feel like 50, though. It may feel right. like 50. So I think we'll each get about six or seven minutes to give our pitch. So it's really like a debutante coming out at a ball. <laughs> <Just> to, <laughs> that's right. What just, about the timing, too? I mean, we've got the U.S. election. Are you concerned about that? Are people, the eyeballs on the debate for having people watch and having people get to know you guys? No, because the, de the election will be over. The election's tomorrow night. The debate will be the next night, and it's a chance for us to come out. Michael, thank you so much for joining us this morning.